It's getting to be time to talk about Christmas movies, the all-important conversation we have to have about Christmas movies, and we can't talk about Christmas movies without starting with the two, there are only two great Christmas movies. There are many nice, pleasant, good Christmas movies, but only two great ones. One is Scrooge, or sometimes called The Christmas Carol, the 1951 version. This is the only one that is actually a great, great film. Except for The Maltese Falcon with Humphrey Bogart, it is the best cast, most perfectly cast movie ever made. Uh, Alistair Sim, Mervyn Johns is Bob Cratchit. These are guys whose names you don't know because they're all uh, obscure British actors. First of all, of course, it is one of the very few great Christmas stories, which is A Christmas Carol. But one of the things that makes the movie great is that Alistair Sim doesn't play Scrooge as a mean man. He plays him as a man with a philosophy. He plays him as a man who believes that he is doing the right thing. So, for instance, when somebody comes, uh, when people come and ask him for charity, to give charity to the poor, he doesn't say, no, I'm not going to give charity to the poor because I'm a miser. He has a complete philosophy. Here's a bit of that scene. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the union workhouses, are they still in operation? They are. I wish I could say they were not. Oh, from what you said at first, I was afraid that something had happened to stop them in their useful course. I'm very glad to hear it. I don't think you quite understand us, sir. A few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. Why? Because it is at Christmas time that want is most keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Uh, what can I put you down for? <laughs> Nothing. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. He, he pays his taxes. He pays for the systems that take care of the poor. Why should he be giving money to charity? And you hear this a lot. I mean, you hear this is really outside of politics. You hear a lot of people who have philosophies, who actually know what they think and have it all worked out, and they're just doing the wrong thing. And Dickens does this on purpose and is preserved in the script by a truly great uh, writer, uh, Noel Langley, who wrote the first script for The Wizard of Oz as well. It's in Dickens to give him good arguments, to say, no, these, these arguments make sense. He, he's not talking rot. Uh, this is my argument whenever I talk to people who think Ayn Rand is, is making sense. Well, she may be making sense. She's just doing the wrong thing. She is advising people to do the wrong thing. If man wants to live on earth, he has to hold the reason as his only guide to action. But the other thing that makes a great Christmas story is a lack of sentimentality. When you see most Christmas stories today, they end with a little sniffly tear and finally the lonely woman finds her man or the guy comes home who hadn't come home. But that's not the heart of A Christmas Carol because at the end of A Christmas Carol, Nothing that Scrooge has done, the harm that he's done, the people he's neglected, the people he's thrown into debtor's prison, none of that goes away. The only thing that changes is Scrooge himself. His attitude changes, and suddenly he sees the world through a Christian perspective. And this is what in, in Christianity is called metanoia. It's just a change of the way of looking at the world. He's not punished for his sins. He doesn't. He can't go back and bring the dead back to life. He can't bring the poor, make the poor rich. He just changes. What would make Mr. Scrooge take such leave of his senses suddenly? Christmas. And so at the end, he brings in his much beleaguered, uh, you know, uh, worker, Bob Cratchit, and he starts to pretend to be the mean guy he used to be. But then he says, no, I'm going to give you a raise. Here's that scene. I haven't taken leave of my senses, Bob. I've come to them. From now on, I want to try to help you to raise that family of yours. If you'll let me. Well, well, we'll talk it over later, Bob, over a, over a bowl of hot punch. Hmm? Yeah. Meanwhile, you, you just go and put some more coal in that fire. And you go straight out and buy a new coal scuttle. Isn't you do that before you dot another I, Bob Crackett? <laughs> <laughs> I don't deserve to be so happy. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I just can't help it. <laughs> 
that line, I think, is one of the great lines in film. I do not believe, I'm speaking off the top of my head, but I do not believe that that is in the book. I don't deserve to be so happy, but I can't help it. And that is uh, the essential Christian message. You don't be- deserve to be saved. You haven't saved yourself. But if you accept uh, the gift of God, then you have been saved. And you can't help but feel the joy and the freedom and the release of that. And that's a very beautiful thing. But again, it is a change of all it has, the, has changed is how he sees things. And that is such an important point. That's why It's a Wonderful Life is also a great film, because the same is true of that. And of course, you, I'm sure you've all seen It's a Wonderful Life. It's Jimmy Stewart playing a guy who is thwarted in all of his ambitions, but he's thwarted in all of his ambitions because of his generosity. All right, we'll get back to that in a moment, but first, look what I got. You're gonna love these. <laughs> these are Kamakoto knives and cutware. I really do like nice cutware, and this is beautiful. Kamakoto makes great Japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from Japan. It comes in this great ashwood box. They only use steel that comes from mills in Japan. Absolutely beautiful and not that expensive either. It really is, uh, you can really get good deals in this. Kamakoto is currently having a massive sale. You can get an additional $50 off any purchase you make with discount code CLAVEN. Click the link below or go to kamakoto.com slash CLAVEN and use promo code CLAVEN to save an extra $50 today. These are really nice. They're really beautiful and you can get them on the cheap if you use that code CLAVEN. Bet you want to know, right? How do you spell CLAVEN? Ha! Ha! What did I tell you? Yeah, I'll tell you. It's K-L-A-V-A-N. There are no E's in Clavin. I just make it look this easy. It's a Wonderful Life is the mirror image of A Christmas Carol. Now, I don't know if they knew that when they wrote it, but it is almost exactly the mirrored image of A Christmas Carol. In A Christmas Carol, uh, a man is a miser. He ruins people's lives. And through supernatural agency, the three spirits who come to visit him, he has shown the evil that he has done and the way that he has separated himself from humankind. In It's a Wonderful Life, you have a man who is generous, a man who is constantly helping people buy homes, who is following the love that he has for a woman. And each time he does this, it costs him his ambitions. He wants to go out. He wants to explore the world. He wants to become an architect. None of that happens to him because he builds a family. He builds a life. He takes care of the people in his community. And in the end, he comes away when a crisis comes and he is left uh, owing money that could have him sent to prison he is left feeling bitter about even the most beautiful things in his life, the love of his family. Here's that scene with Jimmy Stewart uh, as George Bailey. Have a hectic day? Oh, yeah. Another big red letter day for the Baileys. Daddy, the Browns next door have a new car. You should see it. Well, what's the matter with our car? Isn't it good enough for you? Yes, Daddy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse you for what? I burped. All right, tell me your excuse. Now go on upstairs and see if little Zuzu wants anything. Zuzu? Well, what's the matter with Zuzu? Oh, she's got a cold. She's in bed. Caught it coming home from school. They gave her a flower for a prize, and she didn't want to crush it, so she didn't button up her coat. Well, what is it, sore throat or what? Just the cold. The doctor says it's not The doctor? Serious. Was the doctor here? Yes, I called him right away. He said it's nothing to worry Is she about. running at temperature? What is that? Just a teensy one. 99.6. She'll be all right. Of course, it's this old house. I, I don't know why we don't all have pneumonia. The drafty old barn or place. Might as well be living in a refrigerator. Why do we have to live here in the first place and stay around this measly, crummy old town? And all that bitterness comes out of all the things that he hasn't achieved. And of course, we're looking at him and we see that he's loved. He's surrounded by love. Anybody who's ever uh, had a family and been in a family knows these terrible moments when something outside uh, has come down upon you and it darkens your whole perspective. And suddenly uh, you just can't see. You cannot see what's in front of you. If it hadn't been for you. Yeah, if it hadn't been for me, everybody would be a lot better off. My wife and my kids and my friends. I mean, look, little fella, why you go off and haunt somebody else. No. You? And of course, the wonderful moment when, as Scrooge has shown what his life has done to people, the angel comes to George Bailey and shows him what the world would be like without him. It is exactly the mirror image of A Christmas Carol. And once again, the only thing that happens to him is a change of heart, a metanoia, because he still, he'll, he's never going to achieve his ambitions. He's never going to get out of town. He's never going to have a big shot. You've all seen the movie. You've all seen his friends show up and they bail him out. They keep him out of prison. But that's all that happens to him. He's not going to become the man that he wanted to become. He's not going to do the things that he wanted to do. He can't have his life back. And yet everything has changed, including his, the way he looks at the town and the people around him. Here's the scene where he comes back to life. Yay! Hello, Bedford Falls! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, George! Merry Christmas, George! Merry Christmas, movie house! Merry Christmas, Emporium! Merry Christmas, you wonderful old building and loan! Hey! 
here to you in jail. And it's obvious, so obvious that here's this rich man, Mr. Potter, who's just miserable and angry and bitter. And here he is, uh, here's George Bailey celebrating his life, which is, in fact, a wonderful life. And that is the message of Christianity. People who are not Christians think that you're kind of, you know, not having any fun because you want to get to heaven. And when you die, then everything will be better. But of course, it's the exact opposite. It is the, the way the truth, knowing the truth about life beyond life of the spirit beyond the flesh, knowing the truth of what God has done for you transforms this moment right now that you are surrounded by blessings, by beauty, by truth right now. And all it takes is that change of mind. And suddenly, suddenly the life that you have, which you might be complaining about, which you might be worrying about, which you might be angry about, suddenly the life that you have becomes a life of joy. As amazing thing that is what Christmas is about. And that's why those are the two great Christmas movies. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone.